Welcome back everybody to game two of Fnatic versus Power Rangers in the Dota 2 Champions League season three. Let's get right into the draft guys because uh, I was a little bit behind. I was checking out some other stuff. We had, uh, had some issues. Issues abound as always in the office. So let's talk about the draft and I can welcome in my co-caster, Mr. Pimp Muckle, who's going to be joining me once again on the mic. Yep. And well, since you uh, asked about just jumping into the draft. Bad Rider first pick from Fnatic. I want to say this is quite standard. Trix is Bad Rider. Or even Hardy Bad Rider in the mid lane. That's a pretty good one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gonna be great. But Power Rangers, Bane and Sand King. Bane in the last uh, game was actually working out very nicely as a support combination with the Sand King. There's no Mirana yet because it was banned out. What a shame. But, yeah. Kind of standard so far. The only thing completely non-standard is the Huska being banned out. Yeah, and I feel like, uh, I'm not sure if um, if that was actually Fnatic running that recently, or if that yeah. was, it was, I, I feel like it was yeah. MYM was involved in some way, so maybe it was Fnatic versus MYM matchup uh, somehow. In but Fnatic Navi, they had Dusa, Huskar. Oh, that's right, I, I remember that, I remember that. I remember mm -hmm. thinking, though, there was a Huskar really that good. worked out really, really well um, for a team, and they ran it as the offlane, it was the Aban uh, Huskar offlane. Do you remember that? Maybe that was oh, with Ryu. I'm not sure. That, that might have been with the uh, rear boards, but um, yeah, there was a team who ran that, and uh, it's just like it's just if you tank up, man, Huskar is such a, a great addition to to that sort of situation because he's just so damn hard to kill. So honestly, I'm um, I'm good with the Power Rangers banning that one out. I want to see more heroes picking up that hero because he is so damn strong right now. Although I'm surprised. I mean, Power Rangers they do have the Bane, and whenever the Huskar is gonna get low. Brains are boom dead. Mm -hmm. Because that's pure damage. You can't... I mean, you're a Huskar, you're gonna take a lot less magical damage, but when the damage is pure, Sunstrike or the, the Brain Sap, well, suddenly you're just gonna die. Man, that's unfortunate. Also, HP removal works out very nicely against the Huskar. Uh-huh. Well, we're gonna but see yeah. the uh, Darkseer picked up for Power Rangers. Ooh, this is certainly interesting. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. getting real aggressive here. So the, the Darkseer with the Blink Dagger into the Epicenter Burrow Strike. Power Rangers are going for a... Um, it's a little difficult. It's a little difficult to make it work, but uh, it's certainly going to be a strong combo if they can. And uh, they're going to follow that up with a big old tanky Bristleback on the front lines, doing a good amount of physical damage. And I, I think Bristleback is not being seen enough lately because one of the things I love about Bristleback is the fact that he gets so much early physical damage that he's a really strong pusher. Like, he takes mm -hmm. towers down incredibly quickly, and I think it's something that is being underutilized right now um, because there are so many teams running with these push lineups. Well, hell, you don't have to worry about needing supports for it. You don't have to worry about running some sort of split push with the Lycan or something like that. Grab a Bristleback. He enjoys team fights and push down towers really easily. Yeah, and since you usually built him tanky, which is more like an armor thing, um, just grab a, I don't know, AC. And suddenly you can't just spam away all your spells, and then you're hitting for like 200, 250, 300 damage a pop. Mm -hmm. And with a minus armor coming up from an AC, there's just, it's so good. And also, I agree, like so far, Fnatic, you just don't want to go on a Bristleback. If you lasso the Bristleback, you have to be damn sure that you actually kill him. Yeah. If you don't, <laughs> there's going to be like so much counter initiation. Darkseer, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a blink dagger up rather soonish on uh, Cheshire's cat Darkseer. Mm -hmm. Maybe like after the mechanism. Um, yeah, and then everything's going to go to waste. One advantage that they might have here is the Disruptor will be able to be decent control up against the Bristleback to a point. Um, Bristleback isn't really a hero who naturally builds into BKB, but it's also not an item that you steer away from altogether. Storm like, if he, wants to, if he feels like a BKB is necessary, now that I see a Storm Spirit, uh, I'm feeling like it kind of is. That's uh, that little bit of additional magic damage. Like the the disables from Disruptor, I'd be like, okay, I could go either way without a BKB. Um, but now that I see the Storm Spirit, the potential for maybe an Orchid, uh, I feel like it's going to be more necessary. So Bristleback, that may be one of his earlier um, bigger items that he gets. We'll have to see. But Storm Spirit being grabbed by Fnatic, they took a look at Power Rangers and they go, maybe we can sneak by with this highly mobile hero. There is a decent number of stuns though that he's going to have to deal with. Mm, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard, but the main problem is going to be the Bane. The Sand King is pretty much a one-trick pony. Right after Sparrow Strike, you're pretty much free to go when, wherever you want to go. So a Bane is going to be getting controlled a lot by the Disruptor, and this is going to be No-Tails Disruptor, one of his arguably best heroes. 
So I'm pretty damn sure we're going to see a really great uh, Disruptor play so far. And while Disruptor isn't that great early on, because he kind of needs a few levels, I think he really comes online right after his level 6, maybe level 7, all, like around the corner. Mm, if you pair him up with the Tree and Protector, suddenly your early game is going to be looking way better. And if you have these uh, these stuns and the control coming out from the Storm Spirit and the Bedrotter and maybe another rather active carry, I think Fnatic are going to be looking very good in the in the early game stage here. Mm, yeah, I'm trying to think what Power Rangers are really going to go here for this last pick. I want to see a... It's not banned out. Really, it's not mm -hmm. banned out. I want to see Puck. I can't believe Fnatic, they used their last... Um, what, I, I'm really confused here by this lone druid because because I'm presuming it's Bane Sand King support. Uh, they apparently feel that one of those is going to either be a core or they feel Bristleback is going to be. I, like I'm just like Puck just seems to be the perfect pickup here because he's good against Storm Spirit. He's good set up for the Bristleback. Like he's got a good amount of disables to be able to lead. Uh, his only issue was really going to be the Batrider Disruptor. Um, but again, I think it's worth the risk that he is such a like. Dealing with those heroes is going to suck, but wow. when he's on the offensive position, when he's jumping in, he'd be a huge boost to them. Instead, they're going to go for the Silencer, and this will be looking at, what, a Dark Seer in the mid, maybe a safe lane Silencer, and maybe an aggro try coming out with the Bristleback Saint King Bane? Uh, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The other option just being normal off lane Dark Seer, uh, Bristleback defensive try lane, and Silencer in the mid. Yeah, I just want to say Silence Mid could be working out very nicely. Uh, he's going to be having a great time up against the Storm Spirit if this is going to be a mid Storm Spirit. And maybe Fnatic is just going to go ahead and uh, turn this run around here a bit. But it is going to be like a one position. I'm not sure if this is going to be a mid or a safe lane Silencer, but it's going to be a one position on the farm thing. And with a three agility gain now, he is really poised to be a very big nuisance. Um, what do you feel about the Aghanim's upgrade? We recently saw Loda go for a Silencer carry. And he did go in for that Aghanim's upgrade with a refresher off the back of it. Uh, I wasn't too convinced about it. What are your thoughts? Um, actually, same, yeah. I don't like the Aghanim's up on the silencer, especially if you play him as a, as a core carry-ish. I think refresher up is really good, like disgustingly good. And maybe even a Scythe of the Vice. If you've got double Scythe up in a fight, this could be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling that a lot more too. I Honestly, like the, the Aghanim's upgrade... It is interesting, but I feel it's one of those upgrades that is only really super useful early into the game. That being said, though, it yep. will be a decent um, a decent ultimate to be using against, if he can get it, in time up against like heroes like the Storm Spirit. That bit of a mana burn is going to uh, cripple him quite a bit. But let's go ahead and see where exactly Power Rangers are planning on throwing their lane. Scandal did pick up the Silencer, and Moon is going to be on that Bristleback, so it looks like we are going to be seeing a Silencer in that mid-roll, and uh, we're just going to be running plain Jane uh, lanes coming out from Power Rangers. So defensive try lane for them. Meanwhile, on the Fnatic side, uh, they're going to be getting a little... Uh, just protecting their jungle right now, and it seems fairly obvious they're going to be running a defensive tri lane, seeing as they have some of the more defensive supports in the game, a tree protector, as well as the disruptor. They're going to be protecting Hani's uh, shadow fiend. It looks like it. I I don't really value storm spirit in in the one roll as much as I do a shadow fiend. So, but Hani mm. is on the shadow fiend. He pretty much always goes mid, even if it is some sort of harder carry. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing about the current meta is those roles, one, two, three, I want to say, they're pretty much wishy-washy here. So sometimes a lines, like three position is an Admiral Bulldog who's most likely going to be farming his R's off right after the 15 to 20 minute mark when he gets a little bit of space. So even though he starts in the offlane, he's going to be one of the big, I want to say, item bringers of the whole team because his nature's profit, I mean, it's legendary, right? He's just going to have so many items. And the same goes for EG. It's a one position in the mid lane. and. Those uh, classical 1, 2, 3 positions are, are just not there anymore. And I really like this. And yeah, I agree actually, Shadowfiend. And this is Hani Shadowfiend, so he's going to be farming so much. And he's going to be the main DPS dealer. And at the same time, well, Era, Era Storm Spirit is not... I didn't see him too much, especially considering he's coming from Han when Era didn't play it at all. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm really curious to see how this is going to be working out. But if he gets a, a bit of farm, maybe an Orchid, this is going to be really good. And it opens up the map a lot. No tail gonna Rambo right into uh, two of these heroes and Rambo his way back out. Cops a uh, good 150 damage just from the straight right clicks of the uh, of the Bane. But that, I, my biggest issue here is Storm Spirit is so reliant on levels 
that I don't like him being in the try lane. Like, I'm okay with the SF being in the, the mid roll. Not a big problem. Hani's already copped a huge amount of damage, though, just from the straight harassment of Scandal, who's now may actually kill him here. He has to tango up. He may get Ooh. enough health from out of his tangos. Oh. Barely. Just barely gets enough. I think he survived with 10 health there. Yeah, Sun is a good hero, right? <laughs> I mean, holy shit. Scandal. Although, it was a really great item pickup here for Scandal. Oh, well, oh yeah, no. Exactly. There we go. And yeah, now they in dove the in. Lane. They're going to get a stun on Eric here, and he can't do anything to defend himself. He's going to throw back a little bit of damage. Good living armor might keep him alive here. He's doing more damage to J4, and J4 has to back up. He wanted to get down another Burrow Strike. FNG couldn't quite get enough right clicks here. No Tail's going to come in. He actually may get the kill on FNG. That's a lot of damage coming out from that Thunder Strike, and he has vision of him here. He's going to try and take himself out. Gets the deny with the sleep. Well done by FNG. And successfully. So bottom lane, it looks like um, Trixie got the first blood out of that. Diving into the uh, tower. So well worth it for him. He's doing it again now. He's copping a lot of damage. Moon, he's going to get the kill rather easily this time around. Only going down to about two-thirds of his health. He had the tower aggro there. Yeah, I don't know. It was a... Um... It was a small mistake by Trixie. He could have had the kill. Six stacks is way too much early on, even against a first pack. And now once again, Hani mid lane, he's getting harassed off way too much. And the good thing about the tree armor is you can just use it globally, but it just stops any sort of tree armor. Oh, on no. The bottom or the, on the top lane. The body blocking. They went for a surge ion shell on J4, and he just got destroyed by uh, his own creeps. He got completely <laughs> body blocked. He was going to try and jump on the storm spirit, and they were going to go for a dive, but... Couldn't quite get close enough for the burst strike. And uh, I have to say, like, now early on it was a good start. I'm not quite convinced, convinced Scandal will still be able to massively win his lane once we start getting to, like, level 6 or 7. But for the time being, he seems to be doing very, very well. Sleep is going to go down on Era. They're going to combo this up with the Burrow Strike. Ion Shell's doing a lot of damage here. Leech Seed's going to help out, and they're going to be able to kill J4. Era gets away thanks to the power of Leech Seed. Such a powerful ability, and Cheshire Cat now in a little bit of trouble. They only have the Thunder Strike and uh, no extra Leech Seed, but Cheshire Cat is still copping a large amount of damage here in FNG. Oh, dear. Oh, nice body block. I'm not sure what he was doing there. Now has to sleep himself up, but he's still going to be woken up and taken down by Fnatic. That was a very, very questionable play by him, and now they get in range of the Glimpse. Cheshire Cat, he may fall a second time here. They don't quite have the Disables, but maybe with the straight right clicks. One last hit from the, oh, tree, the tree, and they got it. They have just damage. destroyed Power Rangers aggro try. Yeah, and that's such a big deal for Fnatic. They're not crushing bottom lane as much as you kind of want them to be. And mid lane is going really not good. Because Scandal is just doing way too much work in the mid lane. And going up for his skill build, Glass of Wisdom as well as his last word, that just screams aggression and especially carry style. Like, he wants to farm his arse off so much. And, well, there is going to be a smoke gun coming in as well. And if they pick up a kill here on the Shadow Fiend, this could mean... Uh, okay, so maybe they they can come back in this game, but so far, Fnatic, winning this trial lane was such a big deal. And yeah, you see this. They're forcing so many rotations and sent him level to Bane level 1. He's just now getting his bottle. This has been taking him so long to finally get it. Um, it it's been... That's why I kind of figured, like, once it's you get the bottle... CS? Everything. Yeah, I know. I know. He's just been crushed in CS so badly. I expected him to have, like, bottled maybe a little bit earlier. And that's why I thought, like, maybe level 5, level 6. But Scandal has just done such a good job keeping him out. He does have an Invis rune. And this is really going to spoil this gank coming out from uh, Power Rangers. Because they do not have any vision to reveal him. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just have the damage, though. With a burst strike, if you right clicks. Ah, uh, maybe not. Yeah, there is there is no brain sap. And this is going to be hurting them. Now they're going to be heading right back up to the top lane. But what can they really do there? Maybe catch someone off guard? But, I mean, Fnatic, no. There is no one on the whole map right now. No support. Jeez. Honey goes down to uh, half health. However, he's going to try and set up here. I think he's going to go for the kill. Leading with one race. Now going in for the second one. Glimpse back. Couple extra right clicks with the Leech Seed coming in. They will get the kill. Freeing up Honey some much needed room in this middle lane as both No Tail and Fly come in for the assist. Yeah, that's such a big deal. Because suddenly, Honey can have complete free farm, and we all know how well a Shadow Fiend can just catch up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need much time, he just needs like two waves, he's gonna raise him down. And there is also a triple stack here. This is so smart by Fnatic, they know the Shadow Fiend doesn't have the best time in the mid lane. But you know what, we're just gonna give him a great time as soon as he just catches this stack. And it's gonna be big. 
Yeah, we've seen Shadow Fiends all the time when they're having a little bit harder time in their middle lane or they feel like there's uh, some supports ganking them. They just go into the jungle and they farm just as fast there. So, uh, again, I see that uh, SF should be able to make the comeback here. FNG, FNG. in some trouble. And they're going to try and get this, but... Oh, whoa, good wake up there. I was about to say there was no glimpse up for No-Tail yet, but they're still able to get FNG thanks to quick reaction there from No-Tail, who woke up Era in order for him to get the Disable. I was looking for the glimpse, but it's level one, so yep. that, that time that they used it in middle lane, it was still on cooldown from that. Yeah, but this is once again No-Tail just being super active. Out of the seven kills, he was involved in seven, uh, four. Uh -huh. And two of those were, I think, in the bottom lane against the Bristol. No, only one. All right, so that's still kind of okay. And speaking of bottom lane, Trixie's just having a great time in his enemy's jungle. And it's a bit un... un I mean, there's some mud golems here and there. And he has to be very careful that he doesn't oh, get okay. caught out. He doesn't have a haste rune. Oh, Trixie, what you doing, buddy? Oh, it's going to be fine. Just in the nick of time. Firefly now wearing off, but yeah, 1.1k gold in the bank account. So he's going to be looking rather good as well. I'm rather surprised they did not go for the surge on the Sand King to try and burrow strike him. Mm. That might have been just enough time to prevent Trixie from going over the cliffs. But uh, I suppose Sand King, like, only being level 2, he is so underfarmed right now. They really need to get him some good stacks. But the unfortunate thing is, is it's just being cleared out by the Batrider. Yep, and meanwhile in the mid lane, Trian just getting a lot of XP. There is a last word, and it's super annoying once again to deal with, especially against, I mean, against anyone, just just as it is. But the Trian is 100 damage on his right click, so he can actually scares quite nicely, even against the Glass of Wisdom. So yeah, uh, some much needed space, and a little bit of levels are going to be very good. And interesting skill build, Nature's Sky is going to be leveled up here. I'm not sure if I like this, but maybe Fly just wants to go and uh, play the big ward here. Hmm. That is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not sure, like, did he just level it up? Maybe he leveled up in a crucial situation where he felt he needed the invis. Mm, he had it before the last word. Hmm. Oh, it's going to be all right, I guess. I mean, it's only one skill point. And Leech Seed, it's not that much better. It's obviously going to be a bit more, but the mana cost is also going up a bit. Oh, no, never mind. Scratch it. It was like this once, I think. Ah, all right. Well, J4 is getting some much needed room at this bottom lane. He is farming up, uh, trying to get maybe a little bit of Blink Dagger, but the very least experience is the biggest thing he needs right now. And uh, Bristleback has been farming up the jungle because uh, Bristleback can. Like, he's got uh, enough physical damage to be able to go through camps pretty quickly. And uh, with a sustain offer to him by a Ring of Health, there's no issues here. So this will also stop Trixie's attempts to be able to farm up the jungle. As you can see, he's... Uh, being denied by Moon, who's getting the right clicks at the right times. Two to seven, though. Eight and a half minutes in. Right now, Fnatic have lead in about a 600 gold lead and about a 1500 experience lead after their top lane went so damn well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And this all comes back down to this uh, lighting choice here. I didn't imagine Disruptor being such a great uh, pickup here. But no is just making so much stuff work. And, well, now he's going to wrap around. And who's he going to be finding? Oh, Cheshire Cat. Now wrap around the Rosie. Oh, whoa. Wait a second. Can they actually get him? Cheshire Cat, he's got a surge. When he's going to use it, now he's going to use it. Where's this? Oh, good oh, silence. Silent. Perfect time for that one. Uh, no Tail was, like, in the animation oh, of throwing down a glimpse. Bottom lane, Trixie is uh, playing pretty aggressively here. He's going to run out of Firefly. It's already about halfway through, but he should find himself a little hole to dig into. And uh, meanwhile, Tier 1 Tower is going to go down at top as he drew a lot of attention to this bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's base created in good old Trixie fashion. And, well, the Nevermore. So, Hani, we mentioned this early on, like, he was getting completely and utterly crushed. 7 CS to the, what, 23 or something from Scandal. Uh -huh. And now, well, he's having a great time. Yeah, 55 and 5, catching up to the silencers 57 and 35. <laughs> and that's why you see so little uh, CS, such little amount of CS on Hani early on, was all because of the large number of denies that uh, silencer was thrown out. So well done by him. We do have uh, a little bit of stacking here. Moon has now farmed up his Vanguard. I'm kind of feeling like a uh, drums into a BKB. I don't think you really need much else than just straight tank, and then they could just kind of five man. Uh, as long as they have the silencer with them, I, I don't really see Storm Spirit being able to do much in 5v5 scenarios. And he can't also 
He's also not a great split pusher. Like, despite all of his mobility, he does not do very much physical damage. So when it comes to actually taking down towers in trading situations, he's not going to be the greatest at that. Um, I'm also not sure about Arrow skill build. He's rushing the Bloodstone, which means he wants to be rather active. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we mentioned this in the draft. If you have a Shadow Fiend, you kind of want to build a bit of space around him and just give him a bit of uh, farm here and there. And currently, Honey's, I mean, he's taken up all the space he wants. But still, Era, what can really do it? Well, now we're going to see a kill up onto FMG here. Yeah, that's very nice. Up in those raises. There you go. That's good execution. And, um, hmm. Still, why not go for an Orchid on the side of the Storm Spread? Does he really need the regeneration and the HP pool right now? Um... I guess if you're able to farm up a Bloodstone fast enough before you really start getting rolling, oh, it's going to be great. Honey, yeah, he's going to be caught out. Trixie's going to free him. This should still be a kill somewhere. Moon's going to be get close enough to start laying down that physical damage, and they want him to keep on going here with the Surge. He's going to start chasing down Hani. However, he did not get a single level of goo, and I think that's a serious mistake. Now the silence going out. Not going to do much, though, for Power Rangers, for them to be able to turn around this team fight. Glimpse back, though. He's going to get brought back right into the SF. He's still staying alive, though. Iron Shell's doing a good amount. He gets one kill, double kill now going his way off of that first initiation onto Trixie. I'm so surprised. Like, the silence went down. I was like, was that really necessary? Because Bristleback, he is by far the tankiest hero in the game at this point in time. Like, nobody beats out uh, a Bristleback who has a Vanguard and maxed out Bristleback. All of that, almost all of the damage went to his backside, so he was unbelievably tanky. I can't believe they even tried that, not to mention uh, he was getting quills as well as ion shell burn damage on some of those heroes. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That was a huge mistake. Um, it, pretty much the same when you try to lasso up. Uh, oh, Scandal's gonna find no tail. And look oh, at the right one more already. If he gets one more right click, oh man, it would have been a little bit close. I think he actually needed Living two more, up. but so good. yeah. But yeah. I mean, Lasso or Glimpse up on the Bristleback is always going to be the wrong call here. Until someone is just going to kill him. And this should be the Shadow Fiend, but Honey still needs an item. And, ah, looks like he's going to be heading down for this BKB route, which means if you buy BKB, there is not that much damage. He's still going to be hitting quite hard, but it's not enough to bring down a super tanky Bristleback. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, BKB is going to be kind of necessary for him here. Because, uh, like, so much of his damage, he, like, kind of similar to a Luna in that your mid game more reliant on your spells than your right clicks. Right? SF obviously does a little bit more uh, physical damage early on thanks to his souls. He just gets that big old right click boost. But it's still, like, you would much rather be hitting all three raises than get five auto attacks. So, and on top of that, his ultimate as well going off. Those are all going to be crucial. So, a BKB is going to be necessary for him to be able to get off those ultimates after the global silence is thrown down. No bottom lane, though. Oh, what a nice blink away by Trixie. Fnatic, they tried to make stuff happen here in the uh, enemy's jungle. Ah, no, Joel, not going to be getting the ward. So unfortunate. But at the same time, it's just buying time for Arrow. He wasn't uh, joining any of those fights, except for one in the bottom lane, which they kind of lost. And now it's going to be a wraparound gank here, but do they have the global silence? Yes, they do. Era sees it. And, yep, yeah, that's all there is to it. That's a very well-placed ward here. This ward is so crucial for Arrow to just farm up. And now, well... J4, he's going to get caught out. Yeah, he's going to get caught out by the Static Storm. Fly was able to spy him out thanks to uh, some tricky positioning by him. He was using that invis, and he may get caught here, though. He's going to be vacuum back. He does have that ward up on him. Meanwhile, there is a silent up. Disruption goes back. They're not going to be able to go for him. They will finish off uh, Fly, though, as another bit of intelligence goes the way of the Silencer. In the meantime, though, Era is continuing this split push, but again, the physical damage is just not there, and he's not really going to be able to threaten anything. But they can't kill him. This ward is, True. <laughs> this ward is so good. Era now just didn't die twice because of it. And also, it's another ward here, uh, which actually enabled them to... Yeah, exactly, this one here. This is so good. This is so aggro warding. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those support combinations, like a Trine Protector and a Disruptor, you don't expect some super aggro wards. You just don't. Which means Sankin died. And J4 can't get his blink tag off. And it's a rather late Midas now for the side of Scandal, which is surprising still. Um, okay, so who's Bane's dying? Oh, yeah. Four. Here we go. He is gone. Good little initiation there from Trixie, uh, which means he's going to have a uh, Blink Dagger soon. Or not a Blink Dagger, a Force Staff. He already has the Blink. So that's going to be a big hmm. upgrade for them. But uh, yeah, the, the Nature's Guys, level one, doing work for Fly right now because that's how he got those wards down. He's just uh, invising up and throwing down some really aggressive vision 
right in front of uh, Power Rangers' faces. So. And now Era has Bloodstone. They've got now a bit more ganking. And with the Bad Rider and the Storm Spirit and those supports, hmm, people are gonna die very soon here. The only one not gonna be dying is the Bristleback. But if you have four people hitting on him, there has to be a global uh, a global silence. And if you force this out against a, a completely non favorable team fight, you suddenly have a great opening to just take down towers or just farm up. I mean, they've got the late game. And now, yep, here we go. Move. Where's the glimpse? There it is. Glimpse Let's back, static storm. Oh. God, look at that damage. The double damage coming out from Hani is going to be enough to seal the deal there. Cheshire Cat's going to fall as well as he gets overgrowth up. Last couple of right clicks. Oh, man. Oh, the yeah, the there shield. goes another one. Arrow finally gets it. J4 sitting on the side here. He does not have a blink dagger. But maybe if he can just get close enough in the right scenario, he can go in. Bro, strike three. Get off the epicenter. If he gets this off, it'll be big. He'll be able to finish off fly. He'll still fall, though as uh, the Disruptor was able to walk away and he couldn't quite grab the SF. SF fighting up against Scandal. That bad decision there from Power Rangers. Oh, Arrow's dead, maybe. They get okay. completely wiped from that one. That's crucial. And this also was a global silence way too late. Um, and once again, Midas, dude, so Silencer had a great start and then he didn't buy any sort of force stuff. And I feel like against the Slenderbo Fnatic with a Bad Rider as well as um, Storm Spirit, you need an item to position yourself and suddenly it was a um, 15 minute bloodstone and we're 17 minutes in and in two minutes eros got so freaking many charges he's now sitting on 13 charges yeah farming up a bloodstone definitely worth it now man if you can get that many charges it means he just has nigh infinite mana for this so early on into the game they're gonna get themselves even more of an advantage as they take in the big bad boy roshan 6 to 15 17 and a half minutes in about a 6,000 experience lead and a 6,000 uh, gold lead as well. Fnatic well ahead right now and Power Rangers. I mean, I feel they can go late game mainly because the silencer is rather a uh, bit of a beast that late into the mm -hmm. game, but I, I felt like their lineup was built so much more around mid game as they've got good team fight abilities and hold up, Arrow's gonna jump in and Dragon back Scandal. They can finish off Scandal real quickly. There's gonna be a huge boon. SF from the cliff. Is going to throw down a couple of big old nukes and Power Rangers. It looks like they're almost all going to fall here. Moon's going to get brought back in. And even the SF Ultimate being used, they know everybody's taking a lot of quill damage right now. So they want to finish them off as soon as possible. Four heroes go down for Power Rangers. And the only hero left farming is Cheshire's Cat's Darkseer. And uh, that's one of those heroes that, you know, you don't really care what gold you're getting on him at that point in time. Like, he can always mm -hmm. farm. Him getting room to farm is not really a win. Exactly. And we saw everyone just dropping in the last team fight. And if there would have been any sort of day of vacuum into wall, and especially disruption, so Notel couldn't get his three man kinetic field and a static storm off, mm -hmm. this is really going to be brutal. If they get or caught out Mech. once again. Huh? Mech as well would have been a huge boost there. Yeah, exactly. Bristleback, I... he was so tanky. He was killing them all by his lonesome, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Their whole entire lineup is, is they have huge teamfight abilities with long cooldowns. Oh, the send oh, back. Man. And uh, that means they all have to get out of here. Cheshire Cat's going to get caught, though, as uh, the Firefly coming out from Trixie did reveal him. And just another pickoff by Fnatic as they continue to steamroll through Power Rangers' map. Really good attempt by FNG, though. As soon as he saw the glimpse onto him, he tried to sleep himself. And in the animation, he was going back. So that's really unfortunate. Whoa, and I'm looking at Trixie. Trixie. Uh, well, he still gets a great oh static storm. God. Oh, God. Era's going to clean them all up. Scandal's going to fall. Moon has nowhere to go. Vanguard or no, he's still going to go down. And GG, well played. Power Rangers, they just wow. got stomped. They're just like, you know what? We took game one. Let's not try and hold on to this one. All right? This is clearly we've lost this one. We've lost all control. We didn't execute like we needed to. And uh, the result is we just lose way too many kills. And the Storm Spirit, the one position Storm Spirit, the Storm Spirit who was farming in the safe tri lane, ends up picking up Bloodstone and gets a bunch of charges. And do you know, uh, Storm Spirit who gets that much, like those many charges immediately after the Bloodstone, it is so rough to come back from that. Mm. And, and they really did not have enough heroes to be able to combat that also no tail like this guy three man static storm kinetic fields twice in a row oh yeah 
Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, he was kind of 3 to 2 his way up in the first game. Now he pretty much just won him the game. Mm -hmm. Yep, excellent. <laughs> and it's, it's like Fnatic. A huge turnaround from game one to game two, from losing game one to just stomping on game two. That's, uh, it seems like with this, D this whole entire D2CL has just been so close. The uh, If you actually take a look uh, at some of the rankings so far, it's actually really, really even. There have been way more draws than wins and losses right now in these uh, two-game series. The The biggest winners right now, for example, uh, the biggest winner right now is Alliance, who in their group have four wins and one draw. Everyone else has, like, two wins and two draws or one win and three draws or some, some sort of record like that. It's incredibly close in the D2CL, and it's going to continue to stay that way as Fnatic and Power Rangers both add another draw to their list of points, meaning they were still tied up in that third place position in Group 1. So that's going to be it for the night, guys. Short night. Uh, we got some uh, other stuff that we're going to be doing. Go check out the new items of interest. If you haven't uh, seen that show, go check it out, youtube.com slash join Dota. It's, it's a lot of fun, especially if you guys saw it early and it wasn't really your thing. You're like, eh, it's kind of boring. I don't really like artworks and stuff. Uh, we tried to mix it up and make it a little bit more... Um, a little bit more casual. We add it in, basically, we just keep all the bloopers. All the bloopers that we have, and it actually turns out to be really funny. Um, there are some really good moments. The the last I episode... I for this. What, yeah, yeah. The, the most recent episode that we put out is uh, with me and Toby. Uh, I, I'll be honest, it's it's not one of the best episodes we've ever put out, but if you go look at some of the previous episodes with uh, the last episode with me and Zoe, and then the ones before that with Zoe and Toby, uh, all pretty entertaining stuff, so... If you haven't, go check that out. That was just now released. Uh, tomorrow, we do have more D2CL that's going to be happening. Some of the last group state matches are coming up, so this will determine uh, who moves on and who is going to be kicked out. We have um, what is going to be happening tomorrow. We've got Navi versus Power Rangers. That's going to be happening at 18 CET, followed by MYM versus Relax. You're doing fine. So... Two different uh, two-game series tomorrow. Go check those out. And for now, guys, that's going to be it for us. My co-caster was at Pimp Muckle. Pimp, you got anything else to uh, add? Uh, actually, just one more thing. I'm mm -hmm. really pumped up for the TI qualities. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a huge uh, Chinese scene fanboy right now because everyone is, like, so close. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the European scene is shaping up to be just as amazing, it looks like. Like, Power Rangers, they're going to be giving Dog a run for their money, it looks like. So... Can't wait for the TI qualifiers. I hope everyone on the live stream is just ex as excited as I am. It's going to be great. Yeah, and definitely be sure to uh, check out joindodo.com. We will be releasing more information about exactly what we're going to be doing. I know we released some info later. Uh, some of that has changed, and it's all because of what we're going to be doing. We just can't really announce it just yet. Valve hasn't give us, given us a go-ahead. So uh, be sure to just constantly check in, joindodo.com. Follow me at Dota Capitalist. I will also post it over there. And, um, yeah, guys, look forward to it. We, we Hopefully, it will be allowed to announce someday soon. Uh, <laughs> because it's definitely coming up real quick here. Uh, Toby leaves on Sunday, man. Toby leaves on <laughs> Sunday. And next thing you know, uh, a day or two later, TI4 qualifiers start. So, all right, guys. That's it for the night. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you guys tomorrow night on the live stream.